Hello everybody, welcome back to Thieges Notebook Review. I'm your host, Joel Michael. What I have for you today is from... Asus! This is the ROG Zephyrus G14. It's a compact 14-inch laptop purpose-built for gaming. High-end configurations are available with a Ryzen 9, NVIDIA RTX 2060, and 120Hz screen. This isn't one of those. Inside of the featured example is a Ryzen 7, GTX 1650, and 60Hz screen. Are the lower-end specs enough to live with? Well, let's find out. For those of you who are watching for the first time, there's a like and dislike buttons below, a subscribe button somewhere around there, and a notification bell or whatever. That completes the tour, on with the show. This then is the Asus Zephyrus G14. This particular model has the AMD Ryzen 7 4800HS, that's an 8-core, 16-thread CPU that clocks 8 megabytes of L3 cache up to 4.2 gigahertz, and is fed 35 watts as opposed to 45 watts for the 4800H. The dedicated NVIDIA GTX 1650 helps to compute the floating virtual points and carries 4 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, 16 gigs of system memory cache your everything, and 512 gigs of NVMe SSD store your everything. These bits sit underneath a 14-inch 60Hz IPS display and are kept alive by a 4-cell 76-watt-hour battery when away from wall-based nourishment. This combination of specs gives this configuration a natural battery life advantage over the more well-endowed models, but don't expect any miracles. This battery only lasted for 8 hours streaming video, which directly compares to the 120Hz cousins. Gaming also holds up for an impressive 1 hour and 45 minutes. These figures are unlikely to deteriorate if you tell the built-in software to only charge the battery to 80 or as low as 60%. Even when the laptop is turned off, the battery will only charge as far as you let it. Just don't forget to charge it back up before your next full day of classes. No one wants to be stuck with only 6 hours of battery life. Full disclosure, I found this unit used on eBay for under $900 before tax and it was already 2 months old, and I must say, the build has held up well in the meantime but is obviously not designed to be perfect. The display seems to be oh so slightly warped and the bottom part of the chassis isn't aluminum, but is high quality soft touch plastic. The sunken keyboard platform is a warm departure from ASUS previous asymmetrical body design, of which the spacebar key is still a remnant, and thankfully the design team is still not afraid to place hotkeys away from the typical colony of inputs. I wish they were so bold as to include a few more keys in this manner, but I'll get into that later. Let's see what all those holes in the side do. On the right, there's USB-C, two USB 3.0s, an intake, and the lock slot. On the left is another intake, a hole for an electric barrel monkey, HDMI 2.0B, a USB-C port that can take a jolt or two, and a headset in. There's no Thunderbolt because AMD, and it's missing a card reader. So even though the Ryzen 7 4800HS packs a healthy punch, you're gonna need a dongle or 30 to get your camera footage in here for photo or video editing. The included AC adapter stretches a useful 9 feet, and that's with the shortest damn from the wall cord I've seen yet. Since it's not proprietary, it won't be much of a chore to get a longer one, extending your freedom to a potential total of 12 feet. Go you. Just be sure to place the AC adapter in a secluded place where you're not subject to its judgmental gaze. Unscrewing the plastic underbelly is relatively easy this time around. At least it was easy for me. This notebook has obviously been de-skirted before, looking at the wear on the screws. Nonetheless, I practically didn't have to use a prying tool to access the knotty bits. Inside, we can see that there is an open dim for another Sticko RAM, there's one slot for an NVMe SSD, and the battery takes up a good chunk of the real estate. Two fans move air through the heat pipes for both the GPU and CPU, and the included SSD is covered with a nifty little heat spreader. 
On top of all that sits a backlit keyboard that's plenty good to use. The keys emit a subdued, relaxed tone that quietly dances away from the treble spectrum. Inputs register easily for the most part, and it took me no time at all to get accustomed to it. I'd love to say the regular keys work perfectly, but I did run into some issues where I didn't press down far enough while gaming, preventing my avatar from moving in the direction I wanted. The space between each member is rigidly standard, however the arrow keys deviate from this but run parallel to the bottom lip of the spacebar, so they barely evade condemnation. As stated previously, extra hotkeys for volume mic and ASUS software sit above the standard inputs, and yet the G14 could do with a few more, particularly for home and end page scrolling keys, the absence of which clearly draws the line between gamer chic and productivity promoter. And there's no numpad, but whatever, it's a 14 inch, I'll let it slide. And finally, the white backlight is useful, classy, and has three levels of brightness, four if you count off. Manipulating the touchpad gives me no sour thoughts. Movement is predictable, it doesn't get in the way while typing, and it can be disabled via hotkey. Gestures work as they should, and it can be disabled when a mouse is plugged in. Still, no physical keys. I will continue to lament this until the moon turns to blood. It's my party, and I'll cry if I want to. Speaking of crying, is the display beautiful enough to bring a tear to your eye? No, but it's not half bad. Sure, it's not the fancy 120Hz display that shows itself for those with deeper pockets, but the plebeian 60Hz won't let you down. Naturally, those who are dialed into high refresh rate displays and use nothing but will for sure feel the fleecing, especially in competitive shooters. If your taste in games strays from those, however, you'll feel right at home with the wide viewing angles and reduced ghosting. Sure, there's still a fair amount of blurriness here, but overall, it's tolerable. Since it's an IPS display, colors never distort at an angle, but the brightness fades at a close angle. I won't profess it follows any Adobe RGB standards, and the colors run oh so slightly warm. Another thing to note is that this example doesn't include the fancy schmancy dot matrix display that lights up the machined holes on the back of the monitor. That's one more thing you can't see that won't pump your ego. What will pump you up are these speakers. They get so loud the body shakes like two amps in a trunk of a stripped 94 Honda Civic. Who cares about the bass and rage against the machines calm like a bomb? The deep bass in a perfect circle's The Package is audible, understandable, and can be felt through the palm rest. When the heavy guitar comes in, it just gets louder. Damn, I wish I had these speakers in my Electronics Mech 15. You totally don't need headphones with this thing. These speakers have the bass and treble ranges covered. Enjoy. Here's a test of the webcam on the Asus Zephyrus G14. Yep, that's right, it ain't got one. It does have a microphone though, although it's nothing special. Background noise will pierce through without much of anything getting in its way, and the overall quality is decidedly par for notebook microphones. It'll do in a pinch, but you'll want a headset for any serious communication. For regular everyday tasks, there's no running away from the fact that this Ryzen 7 4800HS absolutely flies. When properly equipped, that is. Woe be to any user stuck with the original 8 gigs of memory. I couldn't wait to install all things games and software, so I experienced firsthand how dog slow this system is without dual channel memory and plenty of cash on hand. Once this 8GB module was installed though, it was a night and day difference. I blame ASUS's built-in software, and Xbox Game Pass. While away from games, the fans will always make the slightest bit of noise to remind you it's still breathing and rarely goes perfectly silent, if ever. You can also manually adjust each fan as to how fast they spin at what temperature in 8 different zones and 3 different profiles. Cranking both fans up to 100% is something you'll just have to hear to believe. It's loud. On to gaming. 
Is the base model going to be good enough for every gamer with just the GTX 1650 GPU? I'm thinking... not. Booting up modern games like Control pushes the lowest gamer-directed GPU to its limit, and it struggles to match the monitor's hertz rating in 1080p with low details. Sure, in some of the more tranquil parts of the game you'll enjoy buttery smooth frame rates, but open areas and enemies will immediately sink them their FPS. Fortunately for every miss, there's a hit, like Forza Horizon 4 that will always run at 60 in max details and look great while doing it. The trick is to go to the NVIDIA control panel and set the max frame rate to 60. Doing this will ensure the smoothest possible experience and the lowest possible temperatures. On that note, compared to the more robust G14s with the RTX 2060 GPU, this base model with the 60Hz screen doesn't seem to ride the temperature struggle bus. The fans don't actuate at even half of their potential force, and CPU temps stay just below 80 degrees for the most part, which is perfectly cool for a laptop. That's not to say there aren't exceptions. I'm sure Grand Theft Auto V will torture this CPU to no end, like what we saw in 3 d Mark's CPU benchmarks, but for the most part, it's quite livable. The palm rest doesn't even heat up to uncomfortable levels, and thanks to the lift-up display design, your lap won't be scorched during a gaming session. For the bottom line, the question must be asked, could this laptop replace the mighty Electronics Mech 15 as my daily driver? Honestly, it's very tempting, but ultimately, no. And that comes down to personal preference and the port inventory. I simply prefer a bigger notebook with more holes in the side, and the Asus G14 is too small and too ill-equipped for my personal taste. If this form factor was my jam though, this Zephyrus has some really stiff competition from the Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 7 I just reviewed. The Slim 7 still has a dedicated GPU, though it has exactly half the performance of even this 1650, but it has a better keyboard and has been spotted to be as ridiculously cheap as only $600 from Staples. Of course, if gaming is what tickles your fancy and you have a little something something to spare after all those rare magic cards you bought with your stimulus check, the Zephyrus is a clear winner. In conclusion, students get two thumbs up. This Asus has excellent battery life, it's light, easy to carry around campus, and has stealthy peripherals that won't drive your dorm mate crazy while you type late into the night. Don't get me wrong though, it's certainly missing home and in page scrolling keys, which does hurt a bit, but you'll live. The IdeaPad Slim 7 I mentioned earlier is obviously a better fit for you, but gaming homework isn't gaming that important gaming anyway. Am gaming I right? Those who casually use their time for the aforementioned PC activity shouldn't overlook this laptop, especially this base model. It's kind of affordable and much more portable than any similarly specced Lenovo Legion notebook. Plus the screen won't let you down, the speakers are amazing, and the temps and noise levels just won't get in your way. If you're gonna buy it, do yourself a huge favor and make sure it has 16 gigs of RAM. Don't thank me, thank yourself. Competitive PC-centered entertainment enthusiasts cannot play competitively on 60Hz displays anymore. And when $1200 is somehow magically released from your fundage reservoir, suddenly a 15.6 inch notebook with an RTX 3060 becomes an option, and that's dangerous. Desktop replacement users actually make out the best of all demographics here. You don't care about the screen, keyboard, battery life, or any of the things that make me question this laptop's viability. All you need is the raw performance of the Ryzen 7, and it can burn in its own little corner for all you care. Take caution about the memory though, seeing as how there is only 8 gigs integrated and a dim slot. Home users, Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 7. That's all I have to say. Leave the young at heart to pay hundreds more for dead gamer style, keyboard that's not as good, and speakers that can blow a woman's clothes off. You'll still get a keyboard that lights up and a webcam. Word to the wise, the Slim 7's picture glitches out for the first couple of weeks. It's rather jarring, but it'll update itself away. This has been a review of the Asus Zephyrus G14 here on Thege's Notebook Review. If you liked the video or learned something, click the thumbs up icon below this video. There's more Asus G14 content to come, including a couple gameplay vids, so make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching and you guys, have a good night.